Hey guys, Alex Sturgeon, Hobbytown Hobbyplex, and it is carpet off-road season at the Plex. We're already about two races in, and uh, I've held off long enough. I want to build my carpet car. Every carpet season, I try to do something different. A couple years ago, um, I purchased a Yokomo. Um, another year after that, I ran with the, uh, the Losey Elite car that had just come out. And uh, for this year, I thought I'd do something. I've never owned a Schumacher before in my life, and so I thought I'd go with the uh, Cougar LD2. And I wanted to do a build video for you guys um, as I go through all the steps in the instruction manual um, and then we'll get it all together and we'll get on the track and uh, see how it performs on race day. So without any further ado, is that how you say that? Anyways, uh, here we go. Okay guys, so here we are, uh, page one, and when you're getting into the pivot block height, yeah, you can see uh, they want you to use the highest uh, block. Well, it's not actually in the um, bag A, step three bag. You actually have to go find the S2 parts bag, and inside of here is right there. That is your... Uh, spacer that they want you to use so if you get to this part and you're like what spacer where's this thing at well just go find it it's in the uh, s2 parts bag and uh, get in there and get it and then you can move on all right we're on uh, uh, still in bag a uh, step four where um, you put together this uh, very proprietary uh, unique servo horn and uh, in the instructions of course it shows you to actually bolt it on your servo um, but unless you have a servo tester or some way to uh, power that servo to make sure that it's centered I would recommend just holding off on that until uh, your car is together and you get all your electronics in or able to put in a battery turn everything on and uh, then you can you can plop that guy in there otherwise you're just gonna have to go back and do it anyways um, just to make sure so just uh, I would just go ahead and skip that and wait till the end all right we'll keep going Right, guys we're still on uh, bag a step five and uh, I just want to show you guys this step right here it's kind of towards the bottom um, I ended up putting uh, my camber links on the um, camber plate first and then uh, when I came down here and I saw this I went oh I better do that um, but I would highly recommend when you get to the step, doing this part first so that you have something flat um, to uh, keep those little, to keep these little uh, um, brass inserts in place, um, just so that you don't accidentally kind of get it at a wonky angle. And then doing this step, um, not saying the instruction manual is wrong in any way, I'm just saying that probably if I were to do this again, I probably would have done that first and then went ahead and come up here and uh, put my camber links on. So, okay, we'll keep going.
All right, so I am on uh, bag B, step 13. We're getting into the shocks, and uh, I kind of had a minor freak out uh, because I was actually missing uh, this bottom uh, shock cap here. So um, got all the O-rings in, got the O-ring on the outside, and I went to go put this on, couldn't find it. And I'm like, oh no, this thing's gonna come to a crashing halt, and uh, grinding halt, whatever. And uh, I'm gonna have to contact Schumacher, and I'm gonna have to wait a week or whatever it is, or maybe just you know get one from Hobby Town. And uh, nope, it was actually inside the shock body. So uh, I thought it was missing, but uh, I gave it one last go. I looked at the bag; the bag was still empty. I'm like, well, it's gotta be. Maybe it's here somewhere. So I looked in the shock bottom, the shock body itself, and there it was. So. Just goes to show, uh, these are normally, you know, packaged um, most of the time. Stuff is packaged correctly, and uh, every once in a while, a piece can get caught up in something else. So just keep that in mind when you get to your build. So, uh, more on the Schumacher shocks, um, bag B step 15, um, never put Schumacher shocks together before. And the bleeder caps actually don't come drilled out. You got to drill the bleeder cap out. Um, you can use up to a 1.9 millimeter drill bit. Um, I actually got out my, yeah, racing, uh, piston drill set and picked out, I think it's a one seven and make sure I get the right side. And you can see that you just give it a good twist once you start to see that stop because you can actually poke through the other side. You definitely don't want to have two bleeder holes. So you got one here and that's all you need to do. So um, just wanted to make mention, you know, something a little bit different, never built a Schumacher before kind of used to the associated and low C caps already having their holes in them. And uh, I don't mind drilling it out. It just kind of caught me by surprise, but I definitely want to make mention that if this is your first uh, Schumacher, make sure you drill out the shot caps. Hey, hey, it's the D-Bag.
Okay, we've made it to uh, putting the spur gear on, and I just want to show you guys uh, just something that I stumbled upon. So the spur gear here looks like it had it has flashing, and I for a minute I thought maybe it was kind of done on purpose to try to capture the uh, bearing, but I put it on there, and it 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 seemed awkward. So I'm just going to take this flashing off with the Exacto blade. I'm just going to go in here and very carefully. Just chop that off like that. And now, kind of get rid of that right there. There we go. So now it should uh, sit flush uh, with the bearing and the spacers uh, like it's supposed to. So this is bag D, step 33, and uh, let's put this baby on.
all we got left to do is kind of set the slipper in right height before I go out. And uh, I've got my uh, J Concepts uh, fuzz bites, front and rear, and uh, Protec 6100 battery. Um, might use a smaller battery, uh, but that's kind of all I have right now. Um, my 170BL brushless Protec servo, uh, Hobby Wing, um, Elite G2, and of course my Sanwa uh, MT44, really happy with it. I'm running a 5.5 uh, Reedy modified motor. Um, 22 pinion gear, 82 spur gear. We're gonna see how that plays out there. Um, but for the shakedown, I just wanted to get out there and drive. Um, I really rushed this last part of the video here at the track because I started at like 10.30 and we race at 1.30 and I, just have to take, I actually have to take sign up. So um, we're gonna set the slipper. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing that. So right now, uh, you hold your two wheels down, give it some gas and it's loose. So we're gonna take our 5.5 five wrench here <clears throat> and we're looking to just pick up the front tires just a little bit. At least that's where we're going to start at. There you go, just like that. If you're running a stock, um, your car's not going to do that. <laughs> so the best thing to do is just go put it on the track, give it a little push backwards, give it some throttle. You want it to slip for maybe a foot before it kind of snaps and takes off. Um, but with modified, you should be able to bench test it, lift up the front wheels, and uh, we'll get going. Uh, so now I got to do is just go over to the bench and uh, get the right height tuned up, and then we'll be on the track. We'll get some footage. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this build video. Um, I was really thrashing on it there at the end just to get all the finishing stuff up, getting the body painted, cutting out the wing, getting the electronics uh, put down, get everything trimmed out. And then uh, then we had a race day. And, uh, you know, I didn't I pretty much built this thing exactly like the book said. Um, don't have any sway bars. I just wanted to give you guys an honest opinion since I've never owned one of these things before and uh, thought I would cover everything that I needed to cover. Um, the setup's a little soft for carpet, just in my opinion, uh, out of the gate, but, uh, I made some adjustments throughout the day. Um, I moved my shocks in on the arm and the tower. I uh, shortened the rear link to try to keep the car from rolling so much. And I was actually leading the main, uh, about halfway through. And then I had a female ball stud actually come off and, uh, I guess I didn't use enough thread lock. So not sure why we used female ball studs um, instead of just a regular ball stud there, but uh, whatever, live and learn. So, um, you know, it's not uncommon to see 
different brands of uh, ball studs and ball links and stuff used on different cars. I know the Losi guys really like to use Yokomo. Um, when I had my 22, uh, my 22 four, I put associated ball studs all over that thing, just to keep them from popping off. So, uh, maybe something I'll think about in the future. Um, but other than that, I made pretty, pretty good progress throughout the day. And, uh, I really liked the build. It, it was a little different just because, uh, you had the, um, instead of like an associated team, Losi, um, uh, manual where you get a bag and it's bag A and then you follow the steps but you have to like dump the bag out and get everything separated and organized. That was all pretty much done for you here. You get you get bag A but then you also get step one, two, three, four, five all the way down to like step 40 something in these individual bags and uh, I really liked that a lot. I really did. Um, something else that I really liked about the instruction manual is there's about five or six pages of setup which for some reason these guys here in uh, uh, the, the, you know, the top brands have kind of gotten away from. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's something that's missing in, uh, in instruction manuals. Techno does a pretty good job, um, and Schumacher does a really good job of explaining what, you know, various changes uh, you, could, you could feel and, you know, would do for you. So um, that, part, that being said, I like that a lot too. Um, you know, I'm going to stick with this car for the entire winter. So had a kind of a bummed out outing that first main, just with that little, that little thing coming off in the front, but, uh, I'm going to get some sway bars, maybe some different springs. Maybe I might actually look at Brock Champlin setup and, uh, and, uh, go from there. So for now, um, I hope you guys, uh, enjoyed what we got here and I'll try to stop talking so we don't make this so long. So make sure that you, uh, subscribe, like, tell your friends and, uh, We'll make another video for you soon.